All right, this is how to make your own guitar effects. Before we get started, here's some tools you will want. Uh, first off, a soldering iron. Uh, they cost about 25 bucks at Radio Shack. Uh, this is a pretty decent one. You need some 60-40 rosin core solder. Uh, a spool of that. I use a large and a small needle nose plier. The scissors are for cutting and snipping wires and leads. Uh, this thing that holds the circuit board with the alligator clips, you don't really need one, but it's a good thing to have. Ten different colors of hookup wire. This is really a must as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Got to have many colors, as many colors as possible. A good set of wire strippers to cut and strip the wire and the cables you'll be using in the project. Solder wick. Uh, when you unsolder something, you put the solder wick on it and it soaks up the extra solder so you can remove the part without breaking it. Uh, you really need a good quality multimeter to do this kind of work. Um, I have a Mastec that's a pretty decent one, uh, but any good one is fine. Okay, when we get started, we start by soldering the resistors first. Um, the resistors are small and they're low to the board, and so I always do them first. Um, solder them nicely from the back and then snip off the leads uh, as close as you can. You don't want any leads that are too long uh, pressing against each other and shorting out. Make sure that when you put something on the board, it's the right component and in the right spot. Enough said. Uh, after, after you do your work, just check it off the list. I keep a printed list and I check everything off so I don't get lost. Um, I install the jumpers and the um, resistors and this is a picture of what it looks like with everything done. The uh, bare wires are jumpers. After the resistors, I install all the capacitors. Now, electrolytic capacitors have a polarity. They have a plus end and a minus end. Make sure you point the plus in the right direction. The short wire is always the negative end. Um, this is what it looks like with all the caps installed. Now the diodes. Diodes also have a polarity. Uh, Usually they're made out of glass. They have a black stripe. You can see in this picture the glass, they have the, the black stripe. You got to make sure it points in the right direction. So look at your schematic or look at the layout. Finally, the resistors. Um, double check the orientation of the collector base and emitter. Um, okay, now everything's soldered and it's time to start wiring it up. I start with a pots or the control knobs, the potentiometers. Solder them first. Um, starting from left to right, those are numbered 3, 2, and 1, those terminals. I always use the same color code. I use orange, purple, and yellow. Always. Always. Then I don't get confused. I solder the wire to the pots first and then I connect them to the circuit board. Sometimes on the circuit board they're mixed around. Next the power wires. The positive voltage is always the red wire. Negative or ground is always green. This is why you need 10, 10 or so different colors of wire. If everything was one color it would be very hard to figure out. I always always use shielded cable. Um, it won't hum. Now I'm using regular spare stereo cable with RCA plugs. I just cut it and strip it and I make the cables. The white or the center signal is what carries the signal and the braided goes to ground. All your noise goes to ground when you use shielded cable. So I solder the shield to the ground wire. See that on the circuit board? I've soldered the, the shielding to the ground wire. For the output of the effect, I use an unshielded blue wire. You don't really need 
a shielded cable going out. That's what it looks like with all the wires hooked up and now we're ready to hook up the jacks. So we solder the signal or hot end to one end of the guitar jack and then the shield or the ground to the ground side. Now we toggle up. I usually use a toggle switch, not a foot switch. This is a true bypass effect. That means whenever you switch off the effect, none of the signal goes to the effect. The red signal goes to the middle. That's the input jack. The right side is the output jack. When the switch is in the bypass position, this input and output jack are wired together. The next photo shows this. You can see I wire a jumper to the top of the switch. Now you see that jumper? You can kind of trace with your finger through the red, up around the white jumper, and out to the right side. That's, that's where your signal goes when it's on bypass. In the on position, it goes to the effect, and the blue output wire from the effect goes to the output jack. And you can see that. So basically the whole output, the switch is all wired up now. Now it's time to test the effect. So we just hook up a 9 volt wire, one end to the red and the other, the black, to the ground. Uh, I'm going to play the Les Paul Super Rock uh, electric guitar. It's a 1974 Super Rock. Uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like. This is what it looks like right before it goes into the case. Now, before you mount it in the case, you want to test it now. That's right. Before you put it in the case, test it first. It'll save you a lot of trouble. If anything needs fixing, now's the time to do it. When it's in the case, it's hard to adjust. Okay, now we're ready to, to go. I like Hammond boxes. This is a 1591. It's a plastic uh, Hammond box. I start with drilling the guitar hole jacks. Start with a small bit and make a pilot hole. Then later, when you put in the full size bit, uh, it won't skip around. It'll just go right through. Always do a pilot hole. Okay, it looks good. You can see I've got the uh, drill template there. That's that's how I figure out what size drill bit I need. Next you measure where you want to put the control knobs. This one's only two knobs so it's easy. So I start in the middle and I make sure that they are equally distant from the center so it looks good. Uh, this one has just four holes. It's got the two control knobs, the switch, and it's got a LED indicator. Okay, now we mount everything in the case from the back and uh, it really it starts to look like a guitar effect now. You can see the input and output jacks, all the controls are in there, the switches in there. Everything's pretty much ready to go. This is what it looks like all wired up just the moment before I screw on the back. Um, and once I do that it's ready to play. Just add some nice color coordinated knobs, if you will, uh, that matches the red LED. I label everything. I use a Brother P Touch label maker to put uh, labels on. And that's what it looks like. Uh, this effect was the Ampeg Scrambler. It's a uh, awesome, crazy sounding fuzz box with octave. So that's it.